slideshow from the beginning. So we are going to go over principles of information security, planning for security. Devil's going to walk in just as soon as we get to like slide three or four, isn't he? Objectives, objectives, introduction, going over security. Um, I know. I think my stomach hurts. I don't want to wait for him too long because I really want to go home. Um, oh, and I will not be here next Wednesday at all, period. Because I'm having a test on Thursday and I will be at home preparing. Which test? It's a medical test. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, exactly. It's one that I need to be at home for. The one oh, kind of, the one kind of preparing. Red, so. We'll know about it. Yes, I will post it on. I mean, we don't really meet on Wednesdays anyway. But so, information security planning. Uh, planning helps to, helps you to keep your objectives in place. Helps to keep everything organized. Because if you don't know what you're doing, then nothing is going to fall in line. Um, you have to have a goal to provide direction, establish your obje objectives, and measure your progress towards those obje objectives. Um, five goals for information security governance, strategic alignment. Um, I put Southwest up here because if you Google strategic alignment example, Southwest is a really good one because they put all their goals, they, they keep their prices down, they keep the customers happy. I mean, most people who fly Southwest absolutely love them. I'm not a huge fan because I don't like having to wait to see what number I'm going to be to board the plane. I like to kind of know, but that's just me. My husband likes them. So, uh, risk management, resource management, uh, you know, your, your documents, performance measures, and value delivery. Strategic alignment also, not just Southwest, but like that's the airlines who are merging to, so that they don't go under. That's, that, that would be considered a strategic alignment. Um, different roles and responsibilities, your chief executive officer, he oversees everything, your low-level people who do all of the grunt work, uh, implement the policy, report security vulnerabilities and breaches, and then everything in between. Um, information security policies, standards and practices. Policies direct how, we, how issues should be addressed and what technology should be used. Policies should never contradict law, must be able to stand up in court, and must be properly administered. They're the least expensive controls to execute, but most difficult to implement properly. Without our policies, nobody would know how to, to do anything. I mean, if you work at Tinker, they have a lot of policies, and you have to read them. Well, you have to click that you read them. Just a quick little button that says you read it. Little things that pop up every day that you're supposed to read, and you're, you're basically signing saying, I'm agreeing every time you click that OK button. Uh, policy functions as organizational law that dictates acceptable and unacceptable behavior, like ours is that acceptable use saying that we are going to not do anything that violates Tinker policy. Um, standards are more detailed statements of what must be done to comply with the policy. Practices, procedures, and guidelines effectively how to effectively explain how we're going to comply with the policy. And for it to be effective, it must be properly disseminated. They must get the information all to us. It must be read. We must say we understand it. And it must be agreed by, to by all the members of the organization and uniformly enforced. We went over that last week. And there's the little pyramid that shows how that works. Mm. Set strategic direction, scope, and tone. The enterprise information security policy is an executive level document, and it's usually drafted by the chief information officer. Uh, ensures meeting of requirements to establish a program and use of specified penalties and disciplinary action if it's violated. include an overall overview of corporate security philosophy. Will every company have this? Example of a company that wouldn't you don't think would, would have it. Um, 
a lot of franchise businesses that have it at the corporate level, but it never makes it out to the franchises. Or if you're thinking about going into business for yourself, so that you can be a contractor basically and hire your services out for your company so that you can get a little extra money on the side to do what they need to do. Are you going to come up with a corporate philosophy? Because you have nobody that's working for you, so why would you need it? So there's going to be a lot of different reasons why someone wouldn't actually write down a corporate philosophy. Gross state probably does not have it written down. Um, information on the structure of the organization, responsibilities for uh, security shared by all members of the organization. So this is the components of the enterprise information security policy. You have your statement of purpose. To explain what you want to do with it. Information security elements and define your security, your need for security. You're going to pr provide information on the importance of the system, the information security. Uh, information security responsibilities and rules, you're going to define that. And then you're going to give any other references, the standards, whatever you use to help define your policy. Issue specific security policy. Addresses specific er issues, specific areas of information technology. Common approaches, creating independent documents, creating a single comprehensive document, and creating a modular document. Comprehensive document, is that feasible? Probably not. So if you, if you create a comprehensive security document, it covers everything. Well, What's going to happen constantly tomorrow? Constantly changing, so you have to adapt. Exactly. So if you did this one, you'd have to be updating it daily. I mean, really, if you're going to have a comprehensive. I mean, you, yeah, it'd be good to have a comprehensive document, but it's going to require a lot of work to make sure that it stays up to date. Um, components of the policy, here in your statement, authorized access and use, uh, usage of the equipment. That's the one we get every, every day when we log into our computer at Tinker, basically saying that you know, we're, we're going to use it for official business. We're not going to be using it for personal things. Not going to be messing it with viruses. Prohibited use of equipment. Systems management violations of policy. So, you work at Tinker? Or you used to work at Tinker? No. Um, no, because you were. I was Army. Yeah, you were Army. So, you weren't at Tinker. I was at Fort Polk, Louisiana. Oh. So, how'd you end up in Oklahoma? I'm from Oklahoma. Oh, well, that makes sense. Okay. So, at Tinker, flash drives. Prohibited. Cannot plug one into the machine. When I first started working there, could not plug one in. But if you plug one in, it would flag the system and they'd lock you completely out. You could not log into your machine, you couldn't log into any other machine. Your profile was completely locked out. We had one guy in our department, in IT, supposed to be an example for the rest of the base, right? <laughs> he did it twice in three months. So what Tinker finally went ahead and did, because you can't do and you can't do external hard drives either, but people were doing it anyway. So what they did is now everything's whitelisted. So if the security number is not listed on this list, it cannot access the, the, the network. If you plug it in, you won't be able to see it. So that's kind of how they, they went around that. So now if you plug it in, you won't even be able to see the, the device, which is causing issues because, like my I, information assurance officer, got a new computer and they updated the policy for updating the whitelist and so he hasn't been able to access his hard drive for over a year now. So yeah, he's he's thrilled. Have you guys had someone plug in a personal computer to Zipper yet? No. That's fun. CID takes that stuff so fast and I I get it back. You can't even take a phone in one of the Zipper rooms. I mean they like you, you don't do that. I've only gone into a Zipper room a couple times. What's that? Rather not. It's, a, just, it's secure. It's a secured network. So you have, you have Nipper and Zipper? Yeah. Um, Nipper is the, it's still, it's definitely only government devices. Um, I think it was a personal laptop plugged into our Nipper network, actually. Really? Oh, they, they seized it and he... Yeah, so say, well, everything. now it's totally different. Because in order to add any computers to the domain at Tinker, because now we're, we're AFNet, you have to have your the MAC address on the MAC bypass list. If you are not, if you, don't, if you don't have it in there, it cannot access anything. I mean, it, what used to take us maybe 10, 20 minutes to add a computer to the domain can take upwards to 24, 48 hours now. So, yeah, 
for those of us who were there before the change, it's not pretty. We get really frustrated really so quick. Much easier. I know you don't cross the streams ever yeah. with Nick when you sit there. You do. It's Any idea what the acronym is on? Yeah, I have no idea. Um, Secure internet protocol. Yeah, company. I don't, I don't um, remember. And then the other one said non, non classified. Yeah. Didn't have to have rooms or servers. In, in the medical clinics, they're a little, they're a little iffy, where they're, they were nipper lines, but they were still, didn't just do anything out of them. Yeah. And they've got, they've got everything pretty much yeah, locked down where you can't access a lot of things. You could get to Facebook, but then straight to the IP instead of typing. Actually, we can go to Facebook at the Tinker. It may be slow, but Facebook is one of the few things that we can actually get to outside. Streaming it's traffic. so funny. I love it when my users come up and say, my site's all wrong. What site are you trying to get to? Oh, I'm trying to get to my Yahoo Mail. Okay, and how is that my fault? I mean, I, I can't, I'm not troubleshooting Yahoo. I'm not. I was like, Tinker blocked it? No. And if Yahoo's down? No. I mean, I'm not going to waste my time troubleshooting something that's not even work-related. Because if it's work-related, they're going to have the link to it in the Air Force portal. Now, the weather, the weather one was linked in the thing. That was just because she had to see the virtual computer and it wasn't, it has to go through the authentication because of the Mac bypass now. And so sometimes it can take 15 to 20 minutes for their computer to fully be on the domain in the morning. <laughs> and they get, they get, they'll be like, Virginia, it's not working. And I come over there, I'm like, okay, show me. Makes my job easier though. And I give them a hard time because they weren't patient enough to wait for an extra few minutes. So. But then, you know, if they wait, then it turns out that it's a legitimate issue. Anyway, so. Then you have to do stuff. Usually they're pretty easy, though, in my department. And then uh, components of the information security. It's in your book. We'll be going over it all, pretty much. Um, System-specific policies fall into two groups, managerial and technical. Technical would be mine. And that's kind of where I am on the technical. Y'all would be technical if you're working in IT. I'm not in management. I don't want to be in management ever again. Too much work, too much stress, and I don't want it. I want to be able to leave at the end of the day and go home. I don't want anybody calling me. Of course, I have had users call me at night, but that's, that's beside the point. Well, see, and even in the technical, they can still call you because some people are on call. It's just I'm not really supposed to be, but the person who called me, I used to work at Jackson who had tax service, and I was a manager there, and she was one of my employees, and so she had my information. So she was like, Virginia, my trackpad stopped working. And it's like, okay. Because she just started in our, our area. And we I had a user that did this to me like a few weeks ago. She was like, Virginia, I hate this new computer. The trackpad's not working. I had to steal my husband's mouse just to get into my computer. Okay. And it's a new computer. I didn't know. I mean, usually there's a button that you can push to turn, that locks the trackpad. So I was like, okay. So I just went over to one of the other ones and I looked at it. I was like, there's no button. So I had to pull up the specifications for the laptop. Did you know on the HP ProBook there's a little light, teeny, teeny, tiny little light right there on the trackpad? And if you tap it the wrong way, it turns, it locks the whole thing. That's and apparently my users keep locking the thing. So I went around and made sure everybody knew how to do it. Well, this was like a few days before Donna started, and so she didn't get the memo. So anyway, I was like, just tap the light. She's like, oh my gosh, you're amazing! Stupid thing. That's what they call me for. I love it when they call me at home when I'm getting ready for work and say my VPN won't work. Okay, we'll wait till I get to work and then we'll troubleshoot. It's not troubleshooting while I'm being dressed. But yeah, I don't like being on call. Um, access control list can restrict access to a particular for a particular user, computer, time, duration, or even a file. Um, configuration rules. Combination. Policy combined managerial guidance and technical specifications. 
no policy management uh, policy should have someone who's responsible for it someone who looks it over make sure that nothing needs to be updated method for making recommendations for reviews policy issuance and revision dates a lot of times they don't put the revision date or they just don't update it and it's very important to look those over quite often especially because changes happen a lot and make sure that they're good and automated policy management information security blueprint basis for design selection and implementation of all security policies education training programs and technological controls detailed version of security framework specifies tasks and order in which they are to be accomplished Basically, y'all know what a blueprint is, right? Okay, so if you have a blueprint of a house, it just tells you exactly where everything's going to be. If you, have a, if you don't have a blueprint, you're not going to know what you're supposed to be doing. Or, you might, you might do it and you might be missing things. Or, it may not be quite to the specifications that you had initially wanted because, well, you overlook some, some detail. ISO. Anybody know what ISO stands for? I think it's International Standardization Organization. I don't know. I, I tell myself like 50,000 times and I still forget to say it. But it, it's basically a standard. It's standards. Um, one of the most widely referenced security models. And we will go over some of those. Oops. Yep, that's it. These are some of them. We're not going to go over all of them right now because you'll go into them, especially in your policy classes. Fun things. <laughs> I can tell you I hated policy when I was here. And then whenever I was at Dell and I was actually supposed to be writing, not really writing policy per se, but I was writing procedures, I was wishing I'd paid more attention. Deliverables, those are the major process steps. We're covering some of those too. Uh, NIST security models, these are some of the more, the, the ones that are more related to the, secure, the computer security. NIST, I think we talked about NIST like on week two, didn't we? National Institute of Standards, Technology. Publication 800 14. That supports yeah. the security, supports the mission of the organization. I don't think Deb wants to come in right now. Glad we didn't wait. I am too, because I would have been very upset. Uh, security should be cost effective. Owners should have security responsibilities outside of their own organization. Responsibilities and accountability should be made explicit. Security requires a comprehensive and integrated approach. So if you don't hold anybody accountable for security breaches, what do you do? I mean, everybody needs to be held accountable. And that's why they have us sign the security when we log into the computer. So that way they can press charges and pursue you if you screw them up for them. Um, so should be periodically reassessed. Security is constrained by societal factors. And then I guess table four or five has 33 principles for securing systems. Where's table four or five? It skipped four or five. We went from four four to four seven. Hmm. Framework. Y'all probably don't have the CNS certification that Rose State used to offer, do you? You've heard about them though? That's why I started to grow. It's kind of a pain yeah. in the butt. Now there's only three of them, I think. And they're fixing to all go away. This right here is coming into play. And we looked. We tried to find it because Ken says it's out there. But I looked. I couldn't find it. If I made him come in, he couldn't find it either. But we have a new program. 
we don't know if there's going to be certifications for it. But hopefully they'll do that. I got all mine in, barely. Okay, not barely, I got mine in. Well, barely before they first started saying that they were going to get rid of them. Don't what they're talking about, the June 17th, or I think that's when they're officially going away, all of them. Yeah, they started saying they were going to go away like three or four years ago. And then they kept extending it and extending it, and then now they're, they're officially gone. I mean, pretty much, there's only like three left. And there's almost no way you can get all the classes before then unless you're really, you know, like right close. Because you pretty much have to be finishing this semester. Um, seven step approach to implementing programs. Prioritize and scope. Orient. Create current profile. Conduct risk assessment. Create target profile. Determine, analyze, and implement. Mm. Spheres of security. Foundation of security framework. Levels, levels of control. Management controls the, the direction. Operation controls the physical security and protection. And technical or the tactical and te tactical and technical implementation relative to design and integrating system into the organization. So technical does all the work, operation oversees it, management makes sure that everybody's going in the right direction. Sphere of use. Defense in depth requires an organization to establish multiple layers of security controls or safeguards. Security perimeter um, doesn't protect against internal attacks from employee threats, on site physical threats. So it wouldn't protect against Snowden, which I actually assigned in cyber law. They get to do a thing, I think it's in chapter 12 on Snowden. I think I assigned it. I debated not because I, I was worried that people would get mad. So I think I, instead of doing it as a discussion question, I went ahead and did it as a homework assignment. Because you should put it as a discussion question. <laughs> <laughs> it would be kind of funny. I want to watch the world burn in class. But that's just me. In the cyber law class, I don't know if you've looked at the back of your book, you have like, Ten discussion questions, and then you have what would you do questions, mm -hmm. and then you have like your case study questions. I try to avoid the case study because they're really, really long. But I like to go through the discussion questions because sometimes there's some really, really cool ones in there. So it's like, okay, which ones will make them think? And I think I put one in there about something medical, and I try to avoid the medical for the most part because this is supposed to be IT. But this one was cool because this one was. hoping that when people actually answer the question, they're answering it about the robotic system, about the security. Yes, now he's getting a heads up because he, he's, but I think that's like in 10 or 12, 20, 10, 10 or 11. I'm certain that I will agree on that. Probably. So, but th that's going to be interesting. If you, you should take cyber law. Cyber law is going to be fun because in the fall we're doing it in class. And I've debated not actually lecturing per se, because we're only meeting once a week, but actually doing discussions in class the entire hour. Because I think it'd be fun. Make everybody think a little bit more. I don't know. Because if I do that, then I'll probably wind up having to record some lectures, which I need to do anyway. Um, defense in depth, security perimeters and domains. Training. We're training here. They're learning about security. Except for Matthew, he's playing on his phone. I'm, I'm really kind of. Tablet. Just, I think it's really oh, funny. Tablet, sorry. Those are really much fun. Um, I asked my friends, it's like, hey, what's your library card number? Their, their work friends. I already knew their last name. So they're more than happy to, it's like, yeah, sure, we'll get to see your library card. So I was able to log on to their accounts and it's like, I can see where your address is. I can see somebody had $6 worth of library fines. I was like, yeah, by the way, you have the fines of your card. But like, that awareness is like. So when you were, when you were getting their information, there's no password or anything?
same for No, like the, the library card is like your username and your password is your last name. Oh, so it's kind of like Rose State where they like to use your birth date yeah. as your password. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, 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 it was funny because whenever I was here, I don't know if it's any better now, but whenever I was here, it was your password. Before I left Rose and finally made it so you could change that into something else. See, I think you can. But you could still use the, you could still use the birth date to log in because it would override the other password anytime. So when we were doing our stalking exercise, the first thing we tried to do, because you could get the usernames from the, the course list or the class list, is we would just go and we would you know we stalked and we were trying to get the birth date so we could log Facebook. into their account. <laughs> Facebook. Everybody posts things on Facebook. Oh. But we all knew we were stalking one another. So what do you think the first thing that everybody did? They oh. went in and they locked down their account. My, yeah, I've I know all of my security up already, and it's like my birthday. Even if you're friends with me, it's not, the, it's not the right day. Yeah, see, my birthday's just hidden. I don't want my. It, it's you can tell when it is, but you don't know the year. It's so, like, but even that, then, that's it's not need to know. Not really hard to figure out. It's like, I have because if you go to someone yesterday, this is what we're if doing. If you're friends, if, you, like, if you're friends with someone on Facebook, you can always go back through their posts and say, oh, they had a birthday here, and a lot of times they'll even say how old they are. Oh, yeah. So, you can always find out. It's just, like, I, I, I've it's seen a lot of education. Get, it's amazingly well, simple yeah. to get people's information. Yeah. So. I just told them that's what I did. <laughs> it's like, by the way. <laughs> but you're more, you're more aware now. Oh, yeah. So, but, yeah, right here. Proving awareness. Developing but skills and knowledge. Even though I know this, uh -huh. they, they, they don't know this. Yeah. Or they know it. They see, don't we care. get quarterly emails at Tinker for security. And see, I am a part of the 72nd Airbase Wing. That is who my contract is basically through. So, me as a contractor, that's my department. But I work for the contract field team, the people who actually assign the contracts to everybody. Mm -hmm. So, I get emails from both sides. So when they send out their quarterly security briefing, I get it from both, and I'm supposed to actually review it, answer whatever questions or whatever, and send it back to both. And they're not the same. Oh my gosh. Because CCM and one, see what happens. It's not as bad as when I was in LP, because I sat right across from the security guy, and he's like, Virginia, I didn't get yours. He's like, I know you're not technically in our department, but I need yours. And so it's like, okay, because the others I can pretty much ignore until my boss sends me an email saying, <laughs> Virginia, they haven't gotten yours. And I'm like, hell, hell. Because <laughs> who wants to sit there? I mean, sometimes, okay, when I was an LP, he always had his humor to end. I like humor. humor. Humor makes me laugh. But most of them, you know, they, they, they can care less. So it's just dry and boring. But I like to walk like a duck. I don't think I'm ever going to forget it. When you're walking on ice, you walk like a duck so that you don't. <laughs> Y'all know that? Because when you're at Tinker, you have to walk a long way on the ice. Especially when I was in 3001. I mean, literally, you're walking like a quarter of a mile to get to the building, and they never salt it. And right there in front of 3001 is like a solid sheet of ice for like a month. And if you're lucky, they'll have like one little trail with like a little sand on that doesn't do anything. I feel like I'd bring my own salt. No, what you do is you go on to Amazon and you buy these little cleat things that you put on the bottom of your shoe and it's got these two little metal nubs. Take an old pair of tennis shoes. Just right through. Put screws to them. Yeah, but then you have to take off your shoes when you get into the building. Sure. See, with the little nubs, they're not going to tear up anything, so I can wear them inside if I have to. Well, we could be MacGyver. <laughs> we could do something. Security. <laughs> Awareness. Training. That's what we're doing right now. Companies need to do it. It's important. Um, security education. Everyone needs to be trained. Even Ken gets trained. He has to go for training every so often. Which is fun when he goes to Las Vegas and he gets the M&M stuff. He likes that. Thought I was going to get to go with him this year. It's not going to happen. Formal education is deemed appropriate. Employees can investigate courses in continuing education. If you have certifications, you will have to do continuing education. And they're not always boring. They can be pretty interesting, depending on where you go and what you do.
You have start. You have start, don't you? No. Get your security plus. Get your security plus. Send me an email. Send me an email because I will forget. But it's it's important, especially if you're going to work in anything in IT. Um, I don't put a lot of stock in, in the search, but companies do, and especially Tinker, it is required. I'll get you in the door. It, the what? Yeah. Yes, It's one but of the things that keeps the door from being closed on you. They will actually fire you, though, if you let it go, if you let it um, lapse. lapse. Yeah, they actually fired someone recently because he let it lapse, and they didn't give them any warnings. They didn't say, oh, yeah, you can go and retake the test, and then they just said, you're out, you're done. You're done. Yeah. They didn't say, oh, by the way, hurry up, do the test on Saturday. They have been sending out emails almost weekly. Do not forget your certification. Make sure you do your continuing education. Negative. Problem is, is that after a while, you just kind of ignore those emails because you get so many of them. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, on, it's on you to make sure that you're actually doing your continuing education and getting your service up to date, which I need to pay for mine. Because you have to pay each year for your cert. So what you're saying is he was negligent and complete. Yes. Yes. Security awareness. One that's least frequently implemented. It's designed to keep information security at the forefront of the user's mind. Because if you're not making them aware and you're not sending them all these little, little annoying emails, then they're going to forget about it. And that one most users are thinking. Do they really pay attention? Oh, yeah, here's a cool looking link. I'm just going to click on it. They want to see the 20 celebrities who didn't know they had a twin. Exactly. Doesn't need to be complicated or expensive. If it's not actively implemented, employees may begin to neglect security matters. And that happens. So, comparative framework. Why, how, and what? Yeah, we're not going to go over that right now because I think we're going into that in a later slide. Continuity strategies. So, we've got your incident response plan. Focuses on immediate response. Attacks escalate or disastrous causes changes to disaster recovery and business continuity plan. The disaster recovery plan typically focuses on restoring systems after disasters occur. Um, and the business continuity occurs concurrently with the disaster recovery plan when damage or major event is go ongoing, requiring more than simple restoration of information and information You'll need to keep those straight, too, because they will be on the security exam. And there's the components. Continuity strategies. Before planning can actually begin, the team has to start the process. You have your champion, who is the high-level person that's in charge. You have your project manager, who ensures that it's going according to plan. You're using good techniques to, to, to process this and the resources are being managed correctly. Team members are the ones that do all the work. That's really what happens. I mean, the project manager keeps everybody on task and makes sure that they're doing it all correctly so they don't have an easy job by any means. But the team workers are the team members are the ones that actually do all the work. The majority of the work. I won't say all the work. I know when we were at Dell, we were we were not a disaster recovery or anything like that. But still, we were we were a project that Dell was undertaking because we were working for Boeing, so we were contracted to Boeing, and so we were the team members. Our managers were the project managers, few of them anyway, 
and then they had one guy that oversaw the whole thing, and let me tell you, uh, he, he, he lost all of his hair. And my manager, they usually do. nobody lasted long, let's put it that way, because when I started, okay, when I left, there was only like one manager that was still there, because we started off with four, and they went through them so quickly that, that they didn't last. I mean, because it was an extremely stressful situation. And actually, the job at Tinker, my manager, is the one that got me the job there because he, he was doing what I'm, well, kind of what I'm doing right now. So he, he told me to write a letter, glowing letter of recommendation, and he'd submit it for me, and he did. But he's the one that gave me the um, workload, management, workload management position at, at Dell. So he was pretty cool. He's working at DISA now, so... Um, contingency planning process, you have to develop the policy statement because you need to know what you're doing. You need to conduct a business impact analysis, otherwise you're not going to know which way to go with it, what's going to be affected. Identify preventive controls, what can you do to prevent the impacts from happening. Um, anybody have an example? You've got to have them working in the financial inst institution. We've had a, we've had our share of quite a few things, but the main thing is just redundancy. So, is that like having a backup for your backup of another location? Mm -hmm. See, and that's one thing I loved about Dell. Okay, Dell had backups. Government, not so much. A great example is uh, we're completely in-house space. So we don't have any offsite anything. Oh wow! There is a couple of locations that it is OEC. It is that location. You have to go to backups. And if that location goes down, um, we will be down until you switch sites. Oh wow! And so at that location, you have not only do you have um, uh, standard power, you have generator power, and then the generator run on natural gas or propane and will automatically switch if one of the others go out. So small that, example. That would be handy. It is very handy. See our generator went out and we didn't know. It scares that. the crap oh, out of people out. in the elevator, but <laughs> but it's awful handy. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Okay. For some reason they don't think they're getting out. They think they're stuck for a weekend and they're like No, don't get the out. elevator has a computer, it has to reboot. Mellow, tiny jolt. <laughs> so, tiny jolt, you will not plummet. Tinker, no backups. I had, um, when I was in OP, there was a, one guy who basically created all the positions for everybody in the department. Okay, LP was like 400 plus people. It was a pretty big department. His computer crashed. everybody and say, hey, I need information. If you've got anything in emails, send it to me. Because everybody else had their stuff still in PST. So basically he was able to get some stuff, but it's crazy. Uh, when I worked at Dell, we had two sites, one in Nashville, one in here. Theirs was the one that always went down. So if there's a tornado or something and their location got knocked out, because ours never got knocked out, then we would pick up the slack. So it's kind of along those lines. And see, they did it because they thought we would be going down. But for some reason, Nashville, they went down at least once or twice a month. It was not fun for us. We had a, a phone center is a big deal for us. We have mm -hmm. a large phone center, and it handles a huge amount of volume. You know, they're handling, you know, about 2,000 calls a day. Um, and at the time, they were on their own special phone system because they had the cool phones. And... Uh, we actually had the company that installed it come out to do an upgrade to it. It was scheduled for an upgrade. We had them come out to do an upgrade. In the middle of the upgrade, it crashed, wiped everything. And, you know, we were used to 
and we're like, okay, well, no problem. Let's bring it back up and let's get out the backups. Let's re-image it. It's like, we don't have a backup. What do you mean you don't have a backup? I don't have a backup. You didn't take an image of the hard drive? That would have been a good idea. Oh, wow. Yeah, and we lived there. Um, after several phone calls, a guy literally drove us a hard drive from St. Louis. Like, within, like, 48 hours. Well, it was actually 36 hours. So that we could pop it in and restore us back to where we were. It's and crazy. We were really lucky that it was just a, doing a, we were doing back up Saturday, but, you know, after, after we closed. See, and if they had a plan? It, we were lucky that we had the weekend for somebody to literally drive a hard drive to us. Mm-hmm. Yep. Make it, find it, restore it, put it in a truck, and stay dry. See, and that's crazy. But, I mean, it's amazing how many companies, they don't have a plan in place for any sort of failure. We had a plan. The technician didn't. The and he, and he training. It, training and, he took, and awareness. See? And he took us down. <laughs> he, he did. he took us down. Wow. If it had been a Wednesday night, we'd have been in big trouble. I mean, like, yeah. Because you've been down all week. should have introductory statement, statement of purpose, call for periodic risk assessment. Basically, it's telling you that you need to update it all the time. You need to identify your regulations and your standards. You need to identify who's in, who's in charge of what because nobody knows what their job is in the event of a failure than the chaos. So having everybody know what their duties are. It's kind of like if we have a fire at Tinker. There's a specific person or persons, you know, back at person if someone's gone, who grabs a list of people, hands a little flag, so that everybody can find you whenever you get across the street, and then they have to go through and they have to mark off everybody's name. Um, Investigation and assessment of various adverse events can, that can affect the organization. It's very important to make sure that you know, take an accurate assessment of the different things that could fail, like your hard drive could fail. You know, what are you going to do if your server go, you know, goes down? What are you going to do if there's a power failure and you have nothing? I mean, like at Dell, when the power went out, we had to actually take phone calls and write it all on a piece of paper. So they'd just be running around passing out paper so we could all do manual tickets. It's not fun. You know, you'd think that would be a good idea, but they never did. Because if we were on a totally different network than everybody else, we had a dedicated line from Boeing. Okay. So our line might go down, but the rest of Dell did not. So it was, it was kind of, I don't know, squirrely. But. Um, Organization con should consider the scope, plan, balance, knowledge of objectives and follow-ups. Should determine the mission, process, and recovery criti critically, criticality. I don't know. How do you say that? Because I'm like totally drunk. Thank you. Identify recovery pri priorities for system resources. I mean, what are you going to recover first? Probably ought to look and see what is most detrimental to the business. Um, identify resource requirements, because your re yours at the bank would be a little different than ours at ours would have been at Dell. I mean, the different things that you'd want to bring up first. Incidents response planning um, attacks are classified as incidents if they are directed against information access, have a real realistic chance of success, could threaten confidentiality, integrity, or availability. So Tinker Federal Credit Union getting hacked into, obviously they had a realistic chance of success. Um, incident response is more reactive than proactive, with the ex exception of planning that must occur to prepare incident response teams to be ready to react to an incident. Um, this kind of gives you an outline of the different things. It's pretty much the same as in most of them, most of your policies and 
You're going to have your scope and your purpose. This one you need the organization, organizational structure so you know who's going to be in charge. Uh, predefined responses enable an organization to react quickly. If you know who's in charge of like the fire drill, if you know who's in charge of getting the list of names and the flags for everybody to meet, then it's not going to be chaotic. If, if you don't know who you're supposed to re report to whenever you get across the street and you're 400 people, who do you report to? Nobody would be able to really take roll call. Um, but you kind of understand that the thing there. Um, incident t detection. Most common occurrence is compliant about technology support, careful training. Once incident is properly identified, the organization can respond. respond. Incident indicators vary. Um, incident recovery. Once incident has been contained, the control of assistance regained. The next stage is recovery. You're going to have to examine the data, examine the, the, the extent of the damage. And is that what they do at like TFCU? Figure out where it came from and how to fix it. And assess the damage. Like they know how many people were affected. So that was kind of assessing the damage, finding out how much money they lost. How much it's going to cost to fix the breach? Plug the leak. Plug the leak. Plug the leak and find out what, what was taken. What was taken. Right now. Find out how they got in because, I mean, if they got in once, if you don't figure out how they got in, then. Da data is usually easier to grab than money. Data is like a thousand times easier to get than money. Damage assessment. Um, computer evidence must be carefully collected, documented, and maintained. There's going to be a slide here in a minute about getting the police involved. Mm, disaster recovery. So, if a tornado hits, how are you going to proceed? Let's say a tornado hits and wipes out your entire building. What would your company do? Switch to our backup site. What kind of backup site do you have? Before we found out. It's more expensive to do a hot site. But a hot site gives you everything. It gives you basically, you, you have everything already in place, like um, from your hardware to software. Hypothetically, Tinker gets hit, and that data is thrown out with the tornado or whatever. How how would you go about like recovering the hard drives or whatever? Like that? They probably wouldn't be able to recover the hard drives. Um, I am not entirely certain what Tinker's incident response plan is. I do know that whenever the fire took out 3001, they were able to gather some of the data because not all of the building was burning, of course, and they actually set up a portable buildings around 3001 so that everybody could still work. And some of the people that actually worked there at the time, we were talking about it because I guess it was like the anniversary of it or something, and they were like, um, said that they still have, they have lung issues because of the smoke, because they actually had to come into work in the building while the fire was still going on. Not all of them, the ones on the shop floor didn't, but they actually had to come in and get stuff. So I guess certain areas they still came in because I mean 3001 is like a mile long. It's a really big building, and so I mean they're lucky they didn't lose everything. But I don't think a tornado has ever actually no, I don't think struck so. Tinker and wiped out anything that was detrimental, I mean, to my knowledge. That's a real, it's a real problem for a lot of people. There's a lot of businesses that if it gets hit by a tornado, not only do you have the client machines, but you have the server. You have entire network is contained in a building and even if they have backups at their house which is probably where they are um, they don't have equipment to play it on and like you said it's technically a data breach that computer is in a field somewhere yeah and see I think even if if Tinker was hit the data I don't think all the data would be completely lost the personal computers yeah they'd still be gone but the servers and everything since we're on AFNET we're not just centrally located, and I'm sure, I don't know, I don't know for sure, but I am sure that they probably have some sort of a backup at one of the other bases of the 
the most the most um, trying to think of the word critical information. Um, but yeah, they do seriously hamper. So if something happened where they weren't able to repair the plane, uh, but Lord willing, that will never happen. But yeah, I mean, I'm sure that they have some sort of a, a response in place if something like that were to happen, because they, they do have disaster recoveries and incident response plans at Tinker. I just don't really have access to that information. I wish Devon was here, because he could probably shed some light on all of it. But he bailed on us today, probably because it was a holiday, and he probably thought that it was closed. Who knows? Um... The disaster has rendered the current location unusable. There must be a plan to allow business to continue. So there's like a cold site, warm site, and a hot site. So his would be a hot site. A warm site is similar, but it's not quite as expensive. Things have and to happen for it to be operational. Yeah, there's still things that have to happen for it to be operational. A cold site is just the facility. You don't have anything on it. So a cold site's definitely the cheapest. And there are some that do like um, a shared site. So like if one of them is down and not the other, then one can use it. Now the, the only problem would be if they're both are down at the same time. But then you can share the cost. Mm -hmm. And I actually got the tour place up in Edmond that, that did that. They, they actually, it was kind of like a server farm. So they had a lot of servers that backed up companies' data. And then they had rooms kind of reminded me of a garage because it had like the big glass doors that like, um, I don't know, that you, it looked like little garage doors but they were glass. That would separate, you could, they could separate different sections so that if a lot of companies went down all at once they could all just kind of cram in there and share the space. So, but there's, there's organizations that that's all they do is sell their space to companies. Um, a number of strategies for planning business continuity. Determining factor in selecting between options is usually cost. And there's the hot site, warm site, and cold site. Shared function is timeshare, service bureaus, and mutual agreements. Off-site data, disaster data storage. Like I was saying about the place in Edmond, that's, that's pretty much what they do. We actually got to go through the, the server room. It was when I was working at, uh, or going to school at OSU, one of the guys actually brought some of his students down here, which was fine with me because it was, you know, really close and I didn't have to drive very far, and we got to take a tour of the, the data center. You know. I mean, it wasn't my first time in the server room, but it was kind of cool. Um, when I worked at, no, when I was going to Webster, the IT classes at Webster were kind of a joke because it was for people who weren't necessarily doing it for IT, and so it was kind of like a network refresher. But he worked for the 911 office downtown, over by the jail, and so we got to go through their data center, and that one, that one was kind of cool. That, and we got to go through the call center and listen to some of the 911 calls being placed. He actually tried to see if he could get permission to take us to um, uh, the Memorial Marathon, so that we could sit in into their their call center there. But they said it was too short a notice, and they couldn't get us all approved before then. That would have been awesome, though just to see how it was run, you know. Um, Off-site data storage gets sites up and running quickly. Uh, must have the ability to move data into the new site system. Uh, electronic vaulting, remote journaling, database shadowing. Crisis management actions taken in response to an emergency to minimize injury, loss of life, preserve organization's image, market share, complement disaster recovery business continuity processes. Preparation, training, and rehearsal. Tinker, we have to we have to practice. We haven't. Okay, in my new department, we haven't had tornado drills. But when I was in 3001, we had tornado drills. Had fire alarms. You, you pretty much practiced everything. Fire alarms, I got lucked out of a lot when I was in 3001 because if you were out working somewhere else, you didn't have to go. And I was almost always out working somewhere else. The bad part is when you're out working somewhere else and they're having one because their tornado area is 
in the middle of 3001, this concrete bunker, which is the cafeteria, and there's no cell reception. So you can't call your boss and say, hey, I'm stuck in a tornado drill. I'm going to be gone for a while, for like two hours. It was frustrating because they were like, where were you? It's like, I was kind of stuck because they wouldn't let us leave. Because once you're there, you're their responsibility, and so they, they wouldn't let us leave. Yeah, my uncle, he was training every year, and he's uh, happy. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> most companies... Most companies don't really do the, the fire drills, the tornado drills, and all of that. But it's, it's, it's good because yeah, it then you know where you're supposed to go in the event that there's an emergency. I mean, they tell you when you're going through training, but when the event actually you know happens, are you going to remember what you no. learned when you first got hired? Why Chances are, are probably not. Who is that here with you? Who is that here with you? Tornado. I don't know if Rose State does, but or Cuba State. I mean, I would assume that they'd have fire drills, but I'm never, I'm not really here much. I mean, not anymore. When I was a student here, we didn't really have them, but I wasn't here during the day. Something to look into, though, because, you know, they should. I mean, yeah, it interrupt classes, and they probably don't want to interrupt students' classes, but it's still good to have the drills so people know where to go. Um, like, when I, was, when I was going to school here, there was, there was a chance of tornado, but... It didn't come near here, but um, there was hail. And so, if, you know the tunnel right over here that goes right in front of the fine arts building? It became a parking garage because everybody moves their car under the thing so that their car wouldn't get hit by the, the, the hail. Probably not the safest thing in the world to do, but my car would go too, so. Crisis management team is responsible for managing the events from the enterprise perspective and covers supporting personnel and families, determining impact of normal business operations, keeping the public informed, communicating with major customer suppliers, partners, regulatory agencies, industry organizations, the media, and other interested parties. So I, I would assume that that would handle like school shooting or any other shooting because they always keep the public informed. However delayed that might be. Are we late? Yes. We're Why didn't y'all say we were late? We're, we're done. We did. I, we're I done. You saw me pointing at my watch. I didn't see that. Okay, so we're pretty much done. Law enforcement, if you get law enforcement inform, in, involved, you might lose your servers. You might lose your data for months. Sergeant Grit had a break-in, and they had to turn their servers over to the FBI for, uh, for you know, them to, to do their investigation, and it took them months to get their data back, so it means that they were down that entire time. It was horrible. But that's that was it. We're done. We talked too much. That's 10. My alarm didn't go off. <laughs>